Oh, the climb. Okay, I'm quite pleased actually, but I'm not going all the way. Only that. All right. What? The nasty one is this. Is it? The nasty junction. You're okay that way. All right. See ya. Over the winter of 1954, Brian signed a contract with Hercules with fellow cyclist Arthur Ilsley. The manager was Sid Cousins, who had previously managed the BSA team. Arthur doesn't look very happy. Publicity for the retail trade. The following year, 1955, he had high placings in the Flesh Fallon, he was fourth, Paris Nice, eighth, and the Tour of Calvados, ninth. All this leading up to the big one. The Tour de France? Uh, well, uh, they were jumping the gun a little bit because we had to qualify to a certain degree. Hercules were all right, that was fine. Hercules were willing to support us in, uh, or ride us in the Tour, and were hoping to put a team in the Tour. And uh, with that in mind, they sent us to France in mid-January to train with the, uh, with the French guys. In fact, we trained with uh, Louis Zambobé and his brother Jean in the same village. Uh, we weren't always out with them, but at least they gave us a few pointers, etc. And uh, from the results we had early season, the uh, Hercules got a, a place in the tour. Yes. Uh, well, I wouldn't say we were accepted, but we were we weren't turned away. Let's put it that way. You have to earn your place place in these things and gain a little bit of respect. And uh, uh, I think we did that, by, both by our training uh, enthusiasm and. Uh, the way we rode in races, really. To keep the convoy up to its scheduled place ahead of the race itself, a special detail of mobile postillions is appointed. At the Rond Point, the last few minutes before the start tick by, this year, 122 riders from eight countries of Europe will compete, along with a North African team. The French are in the majority, with four teams each of 12 riders. As the cyclists complete the final formalities, we can only guess what they're thinking before the start of this marathon. The greatest test of endurance ever known. The team cars, usually the ubiquitous cheap in new guise, set out into a day that will make headline news. 
To give this news to the world, a convoy of cars and motorcycles carries representatives from press, radio, films and television. Every report is indeed stop press. For, with the race already on its way, this is cycle history in the making. At Sambriuk, on the route of the 120-mile first stage, the whole town gathers to watch the sport and spectacle that only comes to them once a year. This is a time when few tasks are too urgent to be conveniently shelved. En avant les couleurs, into the race leader, is the wearing of the coveted maillot jaune. No laurel wreath is more proudly worn or richly deserved than this yellow jersey. A recheck proves the scoreboard wrong. Laughter turns to tears. By a single second, the Frenchman Loredi is announced race leader. This error, unique in the history of the race, provides a cruel aftermath to van der Stock's big moment. The stage is over. Kabaile from North Africa goes to join his race-weary comrades. For them, it is a meal and sleep. For Namur, it is a night of festivity. Morning sees the start of the long stretch southward. Over the cobbles by Dinan to Metz. Once again, the pattern of the race changes. At the finish, Mani, ace rider from Italy, takes the lead. The struggle for supremacy is already mounting in intensity. Retirements are becoming more frequent, and only the best can maintain the pace. The tour of 1955 started in Le Havre. It was to be a race of 4,495 kilometres, to be contested over 22 stages, by 13 teams. The British team was Dave Bedwell, Tony Hoare, Stan Jones, Freddie Krebs, Bob Maitland, Ken Mitchell, Bernard Pusey, Ian Steele, Bevis Wood and of course Brian Robinson. So come the July, there you were. On uh, the there. Yes, <laughs> it was an ambition realised for me. I mean uh, I'd wanted to do that from for five years at least, if not before then. And so, to me, it was great. The team is introduced to the small audience by Sid Cousins. The guy on the right with the white hair is Frank Southall, a former professional cyclist. Monsieur Cossins, j'aimerais bien que vous nous présentiez vos coureurs, quelques-uns. Monsieur là-bas, c'est... C'est Monsieur Pusey. Excusez, bon, euh, en bas alors, euh, ici. M. Jones, oui. et ici M. Mitchell, oui, Mitchell. et M. Bedwell, Bedwell. et M. Krebs. Krebs. Alors debout, debout au fond il y a M. Hoa, oui. et, et puis M. Steele. C'est ça, il en manque oh, quelques-uns qui étaient par partis, uh, Maitland, Robinson, euh, euh, et quelques autres qui quelques sont partis. Le temps est beau, le vent, un vent léger, souffle de face, mais qui n'est pas pour gêner les coureurs, les coureurs qui ont pris un départ très rapide. Voici Tesser. Pardon, c'est Gemignani, Gemignani qui semble avoir du mal à respirer. Nolten, le Hollandais Nolten, qui essaiera de rééditer ses exploits de l'année 53. Ferdi Kubler, déjà vainqueur du Tour en 1950. Et Louison Bobette, de jaune vêtu, car cette année, le vainqueur de l'année précédente porte le maillot du leader pendant la première étape. The commentator points out Gimignani, Nolten, Kubler, Mbobe. Later on we see Stan Ockers, Gould, Brown and Tony. Les Anglais, 
avec Brian Robinson et Or derrière lui. In the time trial that was held in the afternoon, the British team finished ninth. Les Britanniques, the winners, the Dutch. Les Britanniques qui n'ont guère de prétention dans cette...